Okay, in this lesson, we're going to be taking our model in R and we're going to adapt it so that it has time varying transition probabilities. But before we get into that, I just want to show you something which is called making an R script. So, so far we've been working down here in something called the console. And in the console, every time you hit enter, R will do the thing that you told it to do. And that's fine when you're working out how you're going to do your analysis. But to make sure that your analysis can be repeated later on, it's good practice to make something called a script. So we do that by uh, clicking on this new files, R script. You can also find that in the file menu. Okay, and what I'm gonna do just to start off with is to include in here, this is what we did last time. So last time we had this three state model, uh, healthy, diseased and dead, and we had a transition probability matrix, uh, which was constant over the cycles. And we calculated this array of the state membership and then finally calculated those uh, payoffs that we were interested in. So now that we've got this script, what you can do is you can just hit this source button and then that will run everything that's in this script for you all at once. You can also do source with echo if you want. What that will do is it will make sure that you can see down here in the console um, which commands are being run at each time. So I'm gonna just do that. So source with echo so that you can see runs nice and quickly. It's done all our analyses here and it's filled up our environment with all of the variables and results that we came up with. So I'll just clear, clear the environment so that we're back to square one clear the console so that you don't have to see what was there before and now we're going to adapt this so that it now has time varying transition probabilities okay so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to get rid of this particular matrix because it's no longer doing what we want instead we want to have an array uh, which has an additional dimension beyond the uh, two dimensions of the rows and columns for our three different states and the transition probabilities between them. We also need to add a dimension for the cycle. Okay, so we can actually just adapt how this is written. So first of all, I'm just going to change this to say transmat. Uh, no particular reason. You might uh, reserve having M underscore for when something is actually a matrix type in R. Okay, and instead of giving it the values, I'm just going to start off by filling it with um, NAs. And I need to change that to say array instead of matrix because I'm going to have more than two dimensions. Okay. Now, I can no longer say number of rows, number of columns. Instead, I need to just say dimensions. And I've got the first dimension is going to be uh, the which state you're coming from. So I need um, NS, three of those, because there are three states. And then I need the second dimension to be the state that you're going to. So again, that's NS. And then the final one will be the number of cycles. So that's going to be NT like you see there. The dim names are looking fine, so these are the names along the dimensions, but I'm also going to add another one which is cycle and that's going to go from 1 up to nt. Okay, this, I mean this is fine, it's legible. What you might like to do is align these things up nicely Uh, that just makes your code a little bit more readable uh, when somebody's coming to it. Okay, so now we have this array, but there's nothing inside it yet. It's just it's just completely empty. And you can see that if I run, so I can run just these bits by selecting them and pressing the run button here. So now we've got this transmat variable, but it's just full of NAs. But you can see that it's doing what we want in the sense that we have a transition probability matrix for every single cycle in the model. So that's encouraging. 
So let's start off by filling in some of the nice and easy bits of this uh, array. So I know that at any time point, it's not possible to go from diseased back to being healthy. So I can't go from state two, which is diseased, to state one, which is healthy at any time point. So I could put one to NT here, but it doesn't make a difference. I can just leave it out and it will do the same thing. So that's going to be zero. And then I can say the same thing about going from dead to healthy. It's not possible. It's also not possible to go from dead to diseased. So there we go. We filled in some nice and easy zeros of our matrix. Now let's look at some other things. So the probability of going from healthy to diseased in any cycle is 0.03. And this is the example that we used previously. And we also know that if we're in the dead state, the probability of remaining in the dead state is one. OK, so this is still nice and easy things. Nothing is changing over the cycles. But now we need to look at <clears throat> the probability of dying from the healthy state. So in this model, the probability of going from healthy to dead depends on the cycle that you're in. So the probability of going from state one, which is healthy, to state three, which is dead, depends on the cycle. So if it's cycle one to 10, then that probability is 0.01. If it's cycle 11 to 20, it's 0 0.02. If it's cycle 21 to 30, it's 0 0.04. And finally, if it's cycle 31 to 40, then the probability is 0 0.08. Great, that's looking really good. And we also know that the probability of going from the diseased state to the dead state is just the same as the probability of going from the healthy state to the dead state, but plus 0 0.04. So we can just write that. So it's the same. In every cycle, it's going to be the same as the probability of going from healthy to dead plus 0 0.04. Brilliant. So now there is still one, uh, there are still two bits of our transition probability matrix that need to be filled out. So I will show you that by let's just run these lines and now look at what transmat looks like. OK, so you can see that in transmat everything is filled out apart from the probability of remaining in the healthy state or the probability of remaining in the diseased state. OK, how are we going to fix that? Well. One thing that we could do is say that the probability of remaining in the diseased state is equal to 1 minus the probability of dying from the diseased state. OK, this will work just fine. And that's probably how I would write that one. But when we start to look at in the healthy line, we're going to have to subtract two different things. You might be interested to know, how can I actually add up all of the probabilities apart from the one that I need to find out. And so we can use something called apply. So if I take the, let's first of all, just look at what this slice of the array is. So what I'm doing is I'm saying, I want to be going from the healthy state but I want to iterate over all of the different states I could go to and all the different cycles. OK, so when I run this, you'll see that we have the probability of going to the disease state and to the dead state in each of the cycles. OK, and as you would expect, the probability of going to the dead state is going up over time because of that time varying uh, probability that we included. Right. Now, what we want to do is for each of these columns of this slice, we want to add them up, but ignore any NAs. OK, so if I wanted to do that for just one of them, I would say, let's look at 
say cycle 40 this one down at the bottom here uh, so I've got healthy, diseased, and dead. Well, I can sum those, but it comes up with NA because I need to say remove any NA values. Okay, great. So 0 0.03 plus 0 0.08 is 0 0.11. So this is working fine. I don't want to calculate this for every single one of the cycles. I want R to do the legwork. So I can use something called apply. So I'll take that same slice that I had before of the matrix. And what we're going to do is you put a number in here, which is the dimension that you basically want to leave in, and then it's going to apply over the other dimensions. So this is called the margin. Okay, And then the function that I want to apply to each of these um, matrices is sum and I want to also pass in the argument uh, to remove any NAs. So if I hit enter, now you can see that we've got for every single cycle, the probability of leaving the healthy state. Well, that's brilliant. That's, this is basically all we need to do is one, take away that. And now we have the probability of remaining in the healthy state. Okay, so I would say, transmat one one because this is the probability of remaining in the first state which is the healthy state is equal to one minus apply transmat sorry one too many commas there okay i've done that now and you might want to look in your history. This shows you all the commands that you've run. And if you want, you can send this to the source. And so this will move it over to wherever your cursor is positioned in your open script. OK, fantastic. So that's our transition matrix done. Let's clear our environment and run all the way up to that final line to check that it's doing what we want. Okay, no errors, which is always a good thing. And if we look at transmat, you'll see that as we go over the cycles, this, these probabilities, particularly of going to the dead state or remaining in the particular state, are changing. So in the early cycles, you have a 96% chance of remaining in the healthy state. By the time you're at the end, you have only an 89% chance of remaining in the healthy state. Okay, so we want the same state membership array that we had before, so I'm not going to bother changing those lines. And also, everybody is still starting in that healthy state like we had before. So now we come to this for loop, which is doing our calculation. And we just need to adapt this slightly because we no longer have m underscore p. Instead, we need to take a slice of transmat. OK, and what we're going to take is the transmat entry from the cycle previous to the one that we're doing the calculation for. That's just the way I've set it up in this particular example. You might write it in such a way that you don't need the minus one, but in this case, it is needed. OK, that's given us now our state membership is dependent on a time varying transition probability. And we can just run these to check that they are working. And now if you look at state membership, you will see that we are calculating this uh, healthy, diseased, and dead as we wanted. You might want to just show that in a plot. So you can use something called matplot, which is good for plotting um, matrix-like objects. Um, and I've just supplied what I want on the x-axis, which is 1 up to n underscore t and then this state membership array. And what it will do is it will plot each of the columns as its own entry on this plot. And I'm saying that I want it to be a line graph. So I hit enter. 
And here we see, we've got our lovely graph here. Uh, and you can kind of see these kinks which are happening when the probabilities are changing. Okay, incidentally, if you don't put that type equals L, you end up with a slightly funny looking graph where they use a, a number instead of a line so that you know which column of the matrix is being plotted. Okay, uh, we're gonna stop here for now and in the next video, we're going to adapt the payoffs to also be dependent on time.